guys, welcome back to Pediatric Therapy Essentials. My name is Dr. Heather Sossaman and I'm a pediatric physical therapist. Well, in this week's video, we're gonna be talking about one of my favorite therapy tools, the BOSU ball, so stick around. and welcome back. Well, as I said, in this week's video, we're gonna be talking about the BOSU ball. And for those of you who aren't familiar with it, the BOSU ball is basically half of a therapy ball that's mounted on a solid base. And the beauty of the BOSU ball is that it's a great multi-purpose tool to work on everything from strength to balance, coordination, gross motor skills, and tons of other super fun games. Now the BOSU ball that I'll be using in today's video, I will leave a link to it in the description box below in case you're interested in picking one up. Now in today's video, I have some super fun games and activities to do on the BOSU ball, and some of them come with free printables that will be available on my website, pediatrictherapyessentials.com, and in next week's video, we're gonna put together a follow along BOSU ball workout for you guys to do at home. So if you're ready, let's dive into those activities. The first game I have for you guys works on both strength and balance, and I like to call it the touchdown game. So the object of the game is to stand on the platform side of the BOSU ball and touch down different sections of the ball to the ground without falling off. So to play the game, if you print out the three pages of free printables that I have for you on my website, pediatrictherapyessentials.com, and cut each of those cards out. Now, if you're gonna be playing this game with kids and you want it to last, you might wanna consider laminating those items just to make them a little bit more durable. So once you've printed, laminated, and cut everything out, you wanna take the large squares and attach them to the platform side of the BOSU ball. And if you think of it like a clock, you wanna attach the squares to 12, three, six, and nine. Then the smaller cards, you wanna put them in a pile and then have the child stand on the platform side of the BOSU ball. Then let them grab one card from the pile and see which squares come up. Some of the cards have one square and some of the cards have two squares. So if your child is just starting out, you might wanna use the cards with one square. Each time they grab a card, they want to slowly touch that section of the ball down to match the color to the ground. So if they draw the red card, they wanna slowly lower the BOSU ball down and touch the red side of the ball to the ground and come back to standing. Once they get the hang of one square, you can move on to two. The BOSU ball is also a great place to work on standing balance. Now you can do this by standing on the ball side or the platform side of the BOSU ball. If you choose to stand on the ball side, you're gonna find that you have a lot more sensory input and proprioceptive type information that's coming into the foot and ankle more than if you stand on the platform side. Now, depending on where your kiddo is in their balance journey, we'll decide what kind of activities you do. If they're just starting to get the hang of standing balance, you might wanna simply practice standing on the ball without falling off. But once their balance gets a little better, you can start to challenge it with activities. The simplest one is to use a balloon and practice balloon volley. You can do that with yourself, balancing the, ball, the balloon back and forth between your hands. The further out of your base of support that balloon floats, the more you have to lean and work on that standing balance. If you wanna make it even more challenging, you can play it with a partner or using a pool noodle. Now the BOSU ball is also great for strengthening. And I think most of us have seen lots of videos and blog posts and all kinds of information out there about exercises that you can do on a BOSU ball. And there are tons of them. And if you're working with an older kiddo, you might be able to do a straightforward exercise because they understand why they need to work on strengthening and they're gonna be more inclined to perform the activity. However, if you're working with younger kiddos, they don't always understand why we want them to do an exercise and we usually have to make a game out of it. So the first strengthening exercise is the squat. And I love the squat because it hits lots of different muscle groups in one exercises and it's really great for overall strengthening. And performing a squat on an uneven surface makes it even more challenging. 
So if you're working with an older kiddo, simply doing the squats might be great, but if you want to make it a little bit more fun, here's a couple of quick games. The first one is to attach my favorite toy, the squig, to the bottom of the BOSU ball. Have the child squat down and pull the squig off and return to standing. Now when they pull the squig off, they might get a little bit of a rebound from the release of the suction cup, which will challenge their balance, so just be ready for that. But you can also do something as simple as playing a card game. So use a stool at the bottom of the BOSU ball and place the card piles down there that you need for your game, whether it's Go Fish or, or Memory or whatever else you're doing, and have the child squat down to grab a card each time it's their turn. Now I do recommend giving them some kind of an adaptive card holder if you're gonna ask them to hold things in their hand while they perform the activity, because that might just be a little bit too difficult for some kiddos. Next is the push-up. And just like the squat for the lower body, the push-up is a great upper body exercise that hits lots of different muscle groups all at one time. Now again, if you're working with an older kid, simply flip the BOSU ball over, have them put their hands on the platform side of the ball, and try to do a push-up. For younger kids, the activity becomes more of a mix between a push-up and a plank. So first have them flip the ball over, put their hands on the platform side, and simply try to hold the position. Once they get the hang of it, you can put a ball on the surface of the BOSU ball, something like a ping pong ball or a tennis ball, and have them slowly tilt the platform back and forth to make the ball roll around. If you want them to get the elbow flexion movement of the push-up, you can put some pom-poms on the platform surface of the BOSU ball. Have them slowly lower themselves down and try to blow one of the pom-poms off of the surface. Next, we have our all-important core muscles. So if you flip a BOSU ball with the ball side up, platform down, you can sit on the ball and do some crunches. For younger kids, you can turn these crunches into a bit of a game by using something like a zip ball. So have them sit on the ball and lean back just a little bit like they would in a crunch and have them zip the ball back and forth to you. Next on my list is, I guess, a pretty obvious one. You can work on jumping on the BOSU ball. And it acts a lot like a mini trampoline in that it's a small surface where kids can practice that bouncing movement. Now, because the BOSU ball is rounded, it's going to challenge the foot and ankle a little bit more than the trampoline would. And so if you're looking to challenge those muscles, if you have a kid who maybe um, isn't getting all the ankle movement or doesn't have the ankle strength that you're looking for, this might be a great place to practice. Now, if the kiddo's just learning how to jump, you're gonna to wanna to give them a surface to hold onto or a person as they practice bouncing. But the stronger they get, you can let them start bouncing and jumping on their own. And if you're looking for an easy way to get some cardiovascular activity in, bouncing on the BOSU ball is a great thing to do for that. Turn the music on, blast it through the speakers, and let the kids jump and bounce around on the ball to get that heart rate pumping. And last but not least, you can practice unilateral stance on the BOSU ball or standing on one foot. And just like standing balance, the first thing you wanna do is practice simply doing the task on the ball with no other challenges. So once the child can stand in the middle of the rounded surface and balance on one foot and not fall off, then we can start to make it a little more difficult. So we can put something in their hands like a manipulative and have them do that activity while standing on one foot. Something like a pop tube where they pull the tube apart and push it back together without falling off the ball. Once they get the hang of that and you wanna make it even more challenging, you can start to ask them to do something more dynamic or balance while they're moving. So you would have them stand with two feet in the middle of the BOSU ball and slowly touch one foot down to the ground. Now you can put markers on the floor like the colored dots you see here and call out, touch the red dot, touch the yellow dot, and so on. But if you don't have dots handy, you can also use colored dish towels, colored paper, or even small stuffed animals. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this week's video and have some great new ideas to use with your BOSU ball. Don't forget to pop over to the website and grab those free printables. And if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with someone else that you think might enjoy it. If you're new around here and you haven't subscribed to this channel, please consider doing so, so that you can find out when I have new videos for you guys, which is every Saturday. If you'd like any more information about the videos or topics that I discuss, be sure to pop over to my website, pediatrictherapyessentials.com, and check out the blog post that goes along with each video. Well, thank you so very much for stopping by today. I hope you all have a wonderful week, and I'll see you next Saturday. Bye.